And if you are joining us for the very first time, this online healing crusade takes place like this every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. So tomorrow, next tomorrow, until we see Jesus face to face. Why? Because the Lord told our Father in the Lord to take this crusade online. He gave him the mandate to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ all over the world. And uh, he's been doing it from place to place, city to city, you know, country to country, all over the world, from place to place. And God told him to take it online. So that the same power of God that has been healing, delivering people on ground will come to you where you are in your sitting room. I believe God brought you here and the Holy Ghost is there with you. There is no barrier to the power of God. God has anointed his servant and gave him that word to preach unto you. So where you are listening, just continue to listen unto the end. And the same flow, the same power of God will be there with you to minister to you according to the word of the Lord. I believe you believe. God bless you. Tonight, join me to welcome the servants of the Lord, evangelists, Louis and the Stay connected and be blessed. Praise the Lord. Father, we ask that you breathe the breath of life upon your word in the name of Jesus. As that the anointing of the Lord will come on this word, take us away from just the letters of the word into the spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've been sharing with you on getting some of the word of God that is needed for your healing as a believer and then holding on to those words and bring them before God so you can uh, this is one of the ways by which you can be healed without having to wait for a man of God to lay hand on you or that stuff okay based on Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20 to 22 my son attend to my words incline your ear into my sin let them not depart from thy eyes keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh center reference says my words are medicine to all your flesh so what do i conclude from that god's words is god's medicine the word of god is medicine to the believer and to your flesh that's your physical body you see the bible says that if the uh, spirit of him that raised jesus christ from the dead dwelleth in you that spirit that dwelleth in you will quicken your mortal body that is your flesh your physical body are you getting what i'm saying so it means the spirit of god in us is not only to save us here and take us to heaven it's also to preserve our body while we are here are you getting what i'm saying with sound health so we can live long life without needing to visit doctor or to go to any pharmacies for uh, whatever kind of uh, healing people get from them. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is not to say they are not bad people. It's good to always go to them when you need them, but you may not need them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, what do you mean we may not need them? Well, <laughs> I pray you don't need them. In fact, they also pray that you don't come. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> uh, Proverbs 4, 20 to 22, my son, attend to my words, incline your ears unto my sin. This is God speaking to you. And it goes on to say that, let them, that is, this God's word, not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? So you can use God's word to, con uh, is it to condemn yourself? Not at all. For they are life unto those that find them. They are health to their flesh. So he wants you to get life for me and health for me or medicine for me. Praise God. But you have to keep it in your heart. Incline your ear. I said four things there. One, attend to God's word. Two, incline your ear to it. Three, let it not depart from your eyes. Four, keep it in the midst of your heart. That is taught there. Hallelujah. So I've given a, no a number of scriptures uh, in the last time. So I'm taking us into some other ones now. Uh, let's look at Jeremiah 33, verse 6. I read Jeremiah 30, verse 17 yesterday. So I'm reading Jeremiah 33, verse 6. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. I will bring it health and cure. And I will cure them and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. 
So health there is talking about the kind of health I've talked to you about. This one is soundness in all areas of your life, not needing healing because you are already healthy. I'll bring your body to that state where you are whole. This the word health here. If you look at the Greek meaning and all that, there is one that talks about aruka. There's one that talks about uh, rafa. Are you getting what I'm saying? So they are different. They are, they all mean different things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. So, but in essence, I'm trying to let you know that when he talks of health, he's talking of soundness, wholeness, not needing healing because you are healthy. Are you getting what I'm saying? But when he says I'll cure them okay now that cure is talking about two types there is one that talks about a person that is freshly wounded that needs to be given something like bandage okay i will bind your wounds i will bind your wounds i will take care of areas of your heart are you getting what i'm saying you remember the passage in the scripture where the bible talks of uh, uh, Jesus was giving a parable of somebody that was going uh, maybe uh, outside of Jerusalem, and then people met him, and then they assaulted him and all that, beat him, take away some of his property and all that, and he was half dead there. And then somebody came, another person came, but the third one that came in Samaritan to help him, that one came with oil. He cleaned the wounds. He put some oil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Like bam. And then took care of whatever first he could do. Then now took the person to an inn. And on getting there, he now started telling the people that you take care of this person, whatever cost the will kill, I will pay you. Praise God. But what do I want to bring out there? The anointing that that man brought from the oil that was with the man, he first of all used that to take care of the immediate wound. So, there is part of these three, uh, health, cure, and cure them, that is actually meant for burning, caring, and soothing a fresh wound. Praise God. Immediate hurt. When it has freshly happened, God knows what to do. So, I don't know what I'm talking, who I'm talking to today. I don't know whether you have an immediate hurt you are going through. I don't know whether you have something that is actually hurting you right now. Actually, in fact, you shouldn't be listening to anything now. You should be by yourself, just thinking of all that you are going through, the way this thing is bombarding your mind and your heart and your life everywhere. That immediate wound, that immediate hurt, that immediate thing that has just happened to you, God will take away the sorrow in the name of Jesus. God will take away the wound in the name of Jesus. The balm of Gilead will help you balm it. Others can cry with you, but they can't heal your wound. But God will heal your wound because he said here, I'm the one that will bring you health and cure. And also, I will cure thee. You know, so I'm the Lord that healeth thee. So there is a healing that is coming as a result of this person had this sickness or infirmity, but when it comes to me, I will heal him. But there is people that it's not just he's been having sickness and disease, it's that now, right now, now, now he has a heart. That's what the Bible, part of what the Bible meant by saying that he will heal the broken hearted. Maybe the heart has just been broken. You understand what I'm saying? So it's fresh in the brokenness he needs healing and i pray that the anointing of the lord on this word today will bring that soothing healing balm to your life in the name of jesus god have a thousand and one way to do that he will not only say sorry don't be don't be hot no he will look for something he will provide for you again that will make you forget the sorrow and will restore your life back it will have forgetfulness and you will then have fruitfulness you understand what I'm saying? You may think you have lost. That's why you are sorrowing, you are sad, and you feel bad. But let the devil do his worst. God can still do his best. Are you getting what I'm saying? And cancel all the negative that the enemy has done. I remember Joseph that went through all sorts of things. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible makes us to understand that at age 17, he left his parents. But then, 13 years after, he became prime minister in a particular country, Egypt. And uh, not only that, God has told him that by revelation when he was just a young boy. But 13 years after, all those things came to pass that God has said unto him. And then eventually he married, eventually settled in that country and became highly placed. 
until all his family had to come because there was no food at the other side, so they needed food in Egypt. So God has sent him ahead of time to preserve that country, not only for the country's sake, but for his own country's sake. Ay, ay, ay. God is not preserving Egypt for Egypt. God is preserving Egypt because of Israel. So that the promise of God for Israel will not be destroyed. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I pray that the same way, whatever you are going through, the anointing of the Lord is going to come through, and the power and grace of the Lord is going to come through, and God's power and grace will ensure that the hand of God take away whatever is hurting your life in the name of Jesus. Uh, not only that, um, hurt and wound and broken heart, God will remove in the name of Jesus and restore life unto you powerfully in the name of Jesus. Not only that, if you have gone through something that you need his healing, he will heal you. And after he has healed you, he will bring you health in the name of Jesus. Now let's go a little further from that. I'll give you another scripture today. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 and 20. Deuteronomy 30, 19 and 20. What does he say? I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. This is a promise of God that any and every one of us can choose. But I like the part that says that I have set heaven and earth on record today. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed, that means your family and your generation, may live. So do you know what I get from that? Life and death. None of them is by force. The two of them are by choice. Say, so choose life. So there may be something that is causing sickness, disease, and infirmity. If I don't choose it, I won't have it. And how do you choose it? You choose it by joining your mouth with it. You start saying what others are saying. When they say, hey, COVID is all over the place. Hey, you better close your mouth. Ah, close your nose. Oh, somebody is listening by yourself. No, run away. When you put sickness in your mouth, sickness will find its way into your life. But when you put health, healing, sound words in your mouth, you will have what you say. Life and death is not inside the gun. Neither is it inside the syringe. Life and death is a matter of what is in your mouth. What are you releasing from your mouth? Some came to Jesus and said, why are your people eating this kind of stuff? Why are your people doing this on Sabbath day? He said, look, it is not what a man eats that destroyed him. It is what comes out of the mouth of the man. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, because out of this, your mouth, things that will destroy your life has been coming. But what is it that is coming from the mouth? It's also not originating from the mouth. It's originating from the heart. For from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. But the mouth can speak what can destroy the body. That's why I say this is our tongue. We, have, we better be careful how we use it. For a tongue is a small part of the body, but can take the whole body into trouble. What a man says can take a man to jail. What a man says can make a man to be shot dead immediately because he has said something he's not supposed to say. They can just shoot him immediately. But why did, why did that gunshot? He said what he didn't say. So what killing was not the gun, but the mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If a man say, I shall not die, I shall live, to declare the word of the Lord. And somebody say, hey, he's dead. Because he said he's dead. And death is looking for who to kill now. So he, just, he has just gotten one. But a man that says, no, I will not die. Doesn't matter what I'm going through now, I shall not die, I shall live. He has not put death in his mouth, he has put life. You understand what I'm saying? So, choose life. Don't choose death. It means you can choose if you don't have a choice, if it is death that has the power to kill you, whoever you wants to kill on earth, God will not say, choose life, don't choose death. You just say, be waiting for him when he's ready to come and pick you. So it's not death that the time when he will come and pick anybody. It is people that start saying when they want death to come. 
I know I remember a man of God praying for somebody, or maybe just said that somebody has died and then he was not feeling like praying for the person or whatever. And when he got there to the scene, God just said, You should ask the brother. Because that person that just died had a brother, or that senior brother or junior brother. What? What about this thing that happened to your brother? What's about it? How has he been living his life before? Anything leading to this kind of thing? Is he sick? Is he this? Is he that? The brother said, well, if it is about what happened in the past, my brother has been saying with that around this age a long time. He's been saying, he's there, I can't live to this so age. Ah, no, 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 he can't live to that. He will just around so, so 40, 40 there about he will go. And so whatever happened to make him down around that 40, it's not the thing that happened that happened. It is the thing that he has said that has been happening that finally happened. Right. Are you getting what I'm saying? What he's been saying has been happening since that time, but it now finally happened. A man dies before he died. Because the Bible says, in dying he shall die. So once you have started dying, then you eventually die. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, you know, the Bible says that the soul that sin it, it shall die. But many souls are sinning and they are not dying. No, they are dying. It's just that they are dying gradually till they will finally die. You did what I said. If the Bible says the soul that sinners shall die, every time the soul sins, something dies inside them. He sins again and that thing dies inside them. He sins again, and that thing dies inside. He keeps sinning, some things start dying in him. Finally, they will all die. Every other thing in his life dies. Maybe some organs are dying inside him, but he's still living. Some other organs are damaging again, but he's still living. More organs are getting damaged, but he's still living. One day, we just die suddenly. And we say, but I saw him yesterday. No, you saw a dying person yesterday. He just finally died now. Are you getting what I'm saying? So... But the mouth is what we used to choose. People have been choosing age of death now. Some 70, so they will die around 70. Some 80, so they're dying around 80. Are you getting what I'm saying? But I have not made that kind of choice with my mouth. Because I read from the scripture that 17 and 80, both of them are not age of death for anybody. Where it is read in the scripture, it is read as lamentation. Moses was lamenting that my friends that we all started this journey together. I'm just attending very a lot of them are dying. Say, hey, ah, we having this is because of your wrath, oh God, because you have you are wrought against us. You have said that because if we said some negative thing, they are not supposed to say that they will not see the promised land and they will be wasted away. I see the way they are wasting salami. Just 17 and 80, some of them are dying. The man that said that, which is Moses, he still live up to 120 years. So that he said it does not mean that he died like that. He didn't die like that. In fact, at 120, when he was dying, it was not dying. He was not dying because he has grown so old. He cannot walk. He cannot see. He's just becoming not at all. The Bible said his force was not abated. His eyes was not dim. You know what that means? That means he was not having any weakness as to say it is this weakness of old age that is making him to die. No. If God still wants him to go another 120, he will still go. But God said, oh boy, enough. You come to that mountain. After that, I will make you see the promised land from afar. And then get ready to come and join your forefathers. <laughs> he was not ready to go. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm trying to say that the forces of a man's mouth. Choice! Don't choose one age that you are going to die. Why that peg? What I believe in the scripture, I said, I should occupy till he comes. Has he come? No, then where am I going? If they say a vehicle is coming to come and take me here, why should I find another vehicle to travel before the time? Are you guys not saying? He said, occupy the space and the assignment that I've given to you till I come. So I'm waiting till he will come. But I don't want to be waiting as if I'm loafing. I must be busy doing what the master say I should do till he comes. Busy preaching the gospel till he comes. Busy traveling from one nation to the other till he comes. Busy Casting out the devil till he comes. Busy laying hand on the sick that they might be healed till he comes. Busy preaching the gospel till he comes. I, I must be doing something. What I have to do is so much that harvest is plenty, laborers are few. So we have to do as much labor as we can do within the time that we have to be able to cover for some other people that are not doing what they're supposed to do. You do your own, you do the other people's duty and add it to yours. 
But the master's work must be done. Jesus Christ said, I have to do the work of him that sent me while it is day for the night comment when the man that what not only that he said I am this work the, the work the work of God that I'm doing is my food is my meat is my nourishment that I do that work and I finish it so we should have not only mentality of actively working but the mentality of the master's work must be finished praise God are you getting what I'm saying so whatever we can do to finish it up we must be involved in that. So I am not choosing death. He said, I preach before you death and life, life and death, blessing and cursing, but choose life that you may live. Not only for yourself, I can choose for my seed, so for, that you may live and thy seed. So my choices can determine what happened to my children. I can say, no, none of you is dying any small age. I can't be alive and you are dying. You understand what I'm saying? And you know I'm not going to die until he comes. So where are you going? Why are you thinking of one age of death? There's no age of death. Every age, every age has the age of life until it comes. It has not sold the seed of death in me, so I'm not expecting death. Me and death don't have any agreement. There are people that they have agreement with death, and the Bible says the agreement shall be cancelled. I don't even have any agreement. Are you getting what I'm saying? I've never entered into any discussion with death. I didn't enter into any courtroom with death. I didn't enter into any association or discussion or argument with death. Me and him, life and death, they are two parallel lines. They don't meet. I'm on the region of life. In the region of death and the region of darkness has nothing to do with me. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not only preaching to you. You know what I'm doing? I'm already confessing what I believe. Faith coming by hearing. And then by your saying, you will have what you say. I'm saying I will live long. What about you? Praise God. <laughs> Based on what he said here, he said, Thou, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. Who is my life? God is my life. So it means God's life is my life. Then the length of God's life is the length of my life. His life does not have a beginning or ending. My life, no devil can end it before his time. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? For he is my life and the length of my days. Who determines the length of my day? God, not death, not devil, not sickness, not national law, not international law. Because there are many laws these days. There are law of fundamental human rights. Okay? I don't I hope there's no law of fundamental human death. Are <laughs> you getting what I'm saying? But I am going to live as long as the Bible says, not as you and says. Praise God. Are you getting what that organization can determine my life? It says some people have a plan to make sure that the population of the world is uh, mm, brought to size. Are you God? Why do you want to call the population? Are you a murderer? Are you joining the devil who has come to kill, to steal and destroy? So why will you be determining some people's death and say the population of the world must be reduced? Well, that's the world. I'm not part of them. I'm here till he comes. So whatever they are bringing is not going to affect me because my faith in God will still stand in anywhere, anytime. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this is all based on the scripture. I said, for he is, is my life. He also is the length of my days. That thou mayest dwell in the land wherein the Lord swear unto your father. So I don't want you to forget that word. Who is your life? God. Who is the length of your day? God. Who determines your life? God. Who determines the length of your day? God. God. Not the government, not what that organization, not any vaccine. Praise God. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Let me give you one more scripture. Wow. Do I still have some time? Leviticus chapter 26, verse 3 to 9. Leviticus 26, 3 to 9. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandment and do them, I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. If you do what? Walk in my statue and keep my commandment. So that means one of the things that will make us live long, be fruitful and multiply and be established in this life is to keep the laws of God. Don't violate the laws of God. Don't violate the commandment of God because they are for your good. Every law of God is perfect. Converting the soul is for your good. God does not praise laws in order to restrict you from enjoying. No, he said, come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I have come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. Another sensation says that you may have life and enjoy life to the full. So God does not say you should enjoy your life. And he's not saying you should have half life, full life. Are you getting me? So I pray God will help you know that 
in the name of Jesus. Okay. Ah, uh, can I still give you one more? Uh, can you give me an idea of time? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. That's Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be your real reward. Your light shall break forth as the morning. Your health shall spring forth speedily. So God wants my health to be getting better and better. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's going to be your testimony in Jesus' name. You won't be getting weaker and weaker and less and less. No more strength, no ability, no agility. That's not going to be your portion in Jesus' name. What the Bible says, your health shall spring forth speedily. Spring, bouncing, flourishing like fountain, bursting out every day. Each day you are getting better as your days are shown, shall your strength be. The more days you live on earth, the more strength you have on earth. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I pray that's going to be your portion in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what we've been able to hear today. We are loading ourselves with more of this word of promises that are meant for healing. So that we don't just wait on ministers praying for us alone, but we also depend on the word of God and have enough scripture to be able to quote back, quote back, quote back, and meditate upon, meditate upon, and confess, and confess to ourselves until the promises of God become the realities of our life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for these words. And whosoever is at the other hand hearing what the word of God is bringing, may their faith keep rising and they have more things of the word of God to stand upon, to bring confidence in you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.